So we get these vertical asymptotes when sine is zero for cotangent. Just like for tangent, we had vertical asymptotes whenever cosine was zero. And that occurred at pi over two and three pi over two. So they occur at, for cotangent, we have at zero pi, two pi. But what happens with cotangent is that we start off with a vertical asymptote and then we go towards zero. And keep in mind here, sine and cosine are both positive, which makes cotangent positive. So we start positive infinity and we're coming down to zero. Then we move into this other quadrant where sine is positive but cosine is negative, making cotangent negative. So we dip down to negative infinity. We move into the third quadrant where sine and cosine are both negative and that makes cotangent positive. And the pattern repeats. So real quick, looking between cotangent and tangent, they have the same general shape, but reflected and also shifted a half or a quarter of a period to the side. So tangent passes through the origin, just like sine passes through the origin. Cotangent starts up pi, just like cosine starts up high. Okay, let's now finally look at cosecant and secant. Remember cosecant is one over sine. Remember sine looks like this. What we find is that when cosine is zero, that's gonna create a vertical asymptote for cosecant. And that occurs at the origin, at pi, at two pi, negative pi. However, when sine is one, or negative one, the reciprocal of one is one, and the reciprocal of negative one is one, so we get points that match up. Thus, cosecant looks like this. And the cool thing is, if you were to draw your sine function, Your sign would share the vertex of these little parabolas and just oscillate back and forth between cosecant. So here our green is sine and our red is cosecant. You do not need to draw the green if you don't want to. It's just something for me to show you. Okay, let's look at secant. So secant is one over cosine, which means if we were to sketch out cosine, and actually let's do this proper, 